All right. Welcome back to another episode of Complete Human Performance Radio. I am your host this month, Anthony DeRazio, and today I am joined by a fellow CHP coach, mega athlete, current world record holder in Murph, and hopefully looking to extend that world record, Alec Blennis. Alec, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Anthony. Thanks so much for having me on. I'm looking forward to jumping in and talking about Murph a little bit. Yeah, so we're having you on. We are recording this, actually, on the Friday before Memorial Day. So this is May 27th, 2022, for those of you listening in the future or down the line. Uh, So we are three days out of Alec's world record attempt. Alec, first things first, how are you feeling going into this weekend? Man, there's a a lot going on, right? So physically, training-wise, I feel really good. Um, I've set some nice training PRs and the like. I actually, in training last weekend, did kind of my final run through dress rehearsal, if you will, uh, and was able to beat my time from last year. Um, so all in all, feeling really good physically um, Some things that I'm, I'm not looking forward to as much this year. Uh, I'm competing in a big uh, in-person competition. So rather than doing it by myself on the track, um, you know, whatever day and time of my choosing to optimize weather and that kind of thing, um, of not doing that this year, competing in a, an event on Monday and the weather is forecast to be like, 90 plus degrees um, when the thing starts. So that has me a, a little bit concerned. I'm just hoping I've you know, gotten my fitness to the point where I have enough margin that I can still get it done. Yeah, enough headroom where it's not going to matter so much because uh, 90 plus degrees is not exactly ideal uh, for what you're trying to do here. No, and especially um, not, in the weight, not in the weight vest, that's for sure. No, no, absolutely not. Um, so let's, let's touch on that, I guess. So do you feel like you're approach is going to change at all, given that you're going to be in a group, you know, you're going to have people around you on the run, run portion, or at least initially, you know, is this something where you're going to look out to get a little, get work to get out a little faster on the run to sort of, you know, get some space uh, so you don't get bogged down behind someone? You know, I'm not overly worried about that. I think it's, it's very easy to throw this kind of event, uh, throw it away if you go out too hot. Um, so I'm, going to be very focused on not letting the, the crowd or the nerves or anything like that push me faster than I want to go. Um, cause if you go out 10, 20 seconds too hot, um, even just a little bit that could really derail, uh, a record attempt. Whereas on the flip side, if, you know, if I pace things wrong, if I do get kind of stuck behind someone or, or whatever, and I run out 10, 20 seconds too slow, I'm not worried about that at all. I feel like I can make that time up if I kind of hit the, the strength movements fresh. So, all in all, just looking to stay calm, kind of stick to the plan. Um, if anything, given the, the nature of the weather conditions and that kind of thing, maybe even run a little bit slower than initially planned. Uh, and then just plan on picking up the pace a little bit through the body weight stuff. So that was going to be my next question. Where do you feel like you can make up the most time on Murph? Um, so right now, um, my pull-ups, I don't think can get a, a whole lot faster without uh, – being bad or, or breaking down. I don't want to spend that much energy that early in the event. Um, but the push-ups is the thing that I've um, not only uh, did very well on last year, and I think that's kind of what was responsible for me beating Hunter's old record, but I've continued to make a lot of progress on those. Um, my last trial run, I shaved um, almost a minute and a half off my push-up split, and I think there's still a little bit more room to go. Um, so really looking forward to that. Um, you know, Heat can even be a factor on that kind of stuff, just because you have all your your blood supply going to the skin and whatnot, and not not supporting the working muscles. So, as long as they don't fatigue any earlier than planned, um, that's where I'm hoping to make up the most time. Awesome. Do you? How are you planning to break up those body weights uh, movements? So, why don't, and, and when you answer that, why don't you give our audience, for people that are maybe not familiar with Murph, how many uh, sit push ups and pull ups you have to do? Yeah, so um, Murph is 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, and 300 squats, um, kind of bookended by a one-mile run to start and finish, all wearing the 20-pound weight vest. Um, most people will do that partitioned, meaning you'll do maybe five pull-ups, 10 push-ups, 15 squats, and do many iterations of that or break it up you know, as you see fit. Um, but my record specifically is for the unpartitioned format, which simply means I do all 100 pull-ups before I can move on to all 200 push-ups and then all 300 squats. Um, so a little bit different of an event um, when you can't break it up or, or break it into sets like that. Um, so really the name of the game, and I think where, where people screw this up when they try it this way, is they do way too big a sets um, early on, 
they treat it like an AMRAP. They do as many as they can and then rest until they feel ready to go. Um, and you just burn out very, very quickly. Um, you know, so as a guy who, for example, on pull-ups, even in a weight vest, I could do uh, probably 60 to 70 kind of unbroken uh, butterfly pull-ups. I could probably get close to 100 unbroken pull-ups um, body weight. And I'm doing 10 sets of 10 on the pull-ups, um, just taking a couple of breaths between. So basically it's 10 pull-ups, rest five to 10 seconds, 10 pull-ups, rest five to 10 seconds, just so you stay away from that, that kind of red line away from that point of fatigue. So you can make it sustainable because, you know, you got potentially, you know, for me about 20 minutes straight of body weight exercises. So you really don't want to, you don't want to burn out too early. So pull-ups for me, I'll do about 10 by 10. Uh, if I can do one set of 10 every 20 seconds, um, that's kind of my planned pacing strategy. I've built in about a 30 second buffer there if I if I need a little bit more time. because so I really want to prioritize feeling fresh when I start the push-ups because to me, that's where it's won or lost. Um, so I don't want to go so hot on the pull-ups just to shave an extra 20, 30 seconds and have that cost me the, the next step. Um, so then when I get to push-ups, this is where I've changed my strategy the biggest since last year. Last year, I did 40 sets of five, um, very quick fives broken up by a couple of breaths. My plan this year is um, 25 sets of eight. So increasing from five to eight at a time. Um, instead of five reps every 12 seconds, I'm looking to do eight reps every 15 seconds. Um, so again, it's a pretty quick eight. You know, the, the more I can keep my power up, get those done quickly, the longer I can rest between sets, I actually get a couple of breaths in um, versus them just being continuous, right? So eight very quick push-ups, couple breaths, keep that going for, uh, you know, 25 sets. And if I do that, you know, according to plan, it should take me about six minutes or so for the push-ups. Uh, which again would save me about a, a minute and a half compared to last year. And then how are you doing the squats? Yeah, so in the, the squats, um, that's where, you know, you're, you're getting close to the end there. All you have to do is run afterwards. Uh, that's where I really start to, to just say, screw it and, and send it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so by the, by the time I it's like time to approach. squat, <laughs> by the time you get there, you know, if I'm on pace, if I've done the pull-ups and push-ups appropriately and, you know, the record is in sight and I've stuck to the plan, at that point it just becomes do the 300 squats unbroken as fast as you can, resist the urge to throw up, um, and then just get moving. Um, on that note, the, the run could potentially be slow. Um, I'm not overly concerned with, with the run portion, to be honest. If I can stick to my plan on squats, I find that you know it's better to allocate my effort and kind of expend all the energy I have on the squats themselves because um, that's where I can actually speed up con considerably. Um, you know, A good squat day for me, I might get them done in a little over six minutes compared to a bad day it could be eight or nine, and that's a huge difference. Um, even on a bad day, the run's not going to get that bad or that sloppy. So to me, it's about full send on the squats and then literally just survive the run. No matter how bad the squats are, how hard I work within a minute jogging afterwards, I can, I can find my stride again. So um, yeah, very, very um, careful and deliberate pacing strategy through the push-ups and pull-ups. Then I really just race all out the squats, survive the rest. If I've stuck to the plan up to that point, it's in the bag. There you go. There you go. Um, what, so you got a plan, you know what you to expect with the day and the weather and not ideal, but you'll make it work. What it was, you know, other than your, you know, obviously your approach, as you mentioned for this year compared to last year, when you set the record for this has changed on race day, we're calling it race day. Um, how has your approach changed in terms of the, the training leading up to, you know, the, the event? Yeah. Um, and the huge difference is that I've actually prepared for it this time. Um, <laughs> last <laughs> last year, I know I was, I was training hard rate, but more uh, more general training. I didn't have a specific event I was really training for. And then Murph just kind of happened. Um, and I realized that, oh, hey, I'm actually pretty good at this. I unofficially broke the record. Let's do it again a couple weeks later and, and get it on film and all, all that kind of stuff. So last year when I set the record, it was actually three weeks past Memorial Day. Um, I'd done a few pacing and strategizing workouts, but hadn't really dedicated the training cycle to it. This time going into it, um, I, I started training at the beginning of February, um, actually thinking about building up muscular endurance, working on the body weight stuff specifically. Not that it's, you know, been all consuming in, in any sense. It's not like every single day is, is Murph training day. Um, I'm continuing to do just basic strength and hypertrophy work, basic uh, conditioning work and that kind of thing. But when I do have, you know, some kind of Metcon workout or whatever, you know, I have two or three days a week where, 
you know, I'm focusing on at least some, some aspect of Murph. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think you're, uh, you're, the benefit here is that the, the technical aspects of Murph are low, right? There's not a huge, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not like clean and jerk or snatch where you have to kind of do like a lot of work to get, you know, technically pretty good at it. Um, you know, you've obviously been doing some sort of pressing, some sort of squatting and some sort of pulling up for right. years <laughs> at this point, right? You're, you're proficient, I would say. Um, so, yeah. So let's say, so this is something I thought about asking you. Um, let's say everything goes to shit, right? Just <laughs> for argument's sake, right? Because this is as an, you know, as athletes, I think this is something you have to consider is okay. You know, what happens if X goes wrong? Like it's always good to have a backup plan or like a plan you're switching to mid race or mid, you know, mid event. Um, you know, what are sort of the things you feel are the biggest hurdles? You kind of touched on a few of them, but what do you feel like are the biggest hurdles and sort of what are you thinking about? Okay, if this happens, this is what I'm switching to or what this is my plan, to, you know, what I'm trying to ch change to. And then yeah. to book bookend that, you know, if you don't get the record, you know, what what is what do you think your next step will be? Will it be to retry? Because you're, you're clearly in shape for it, right? You know, I see you knocking the record more as a, you know, it's a fluke thing. It was just a bad day, like bad weather, something, you know, something weird happened more than you weren't in shape for the record. Right. And I, I feel very prepared physically. I think if it was, uh, you know, the same scenario as last year, if it was some sort of climate controlled environment, right? Like I have no doubts that I could shave some time off. Um, so if, if I don't get it, you know, yeah, I'll chalk it up to a bad day or, or bad weather or, or whatever. Um, but I think one of the most important things to keep in mind, kind of going into it, knowing that something could happen um, and something usually does happen. Like last year, my pull-up bar was a little bit wobbly, um, that kind of thing. Like when you have a, a big event like this, um, you know, you got hundreds of athletes on this big rig all running around the a course. And you, know, you get the movements, the judging, like there's so many opportunities for something to go wrong. Um, I'm almost counting on it. <laughs> Just a matter of what is that, right. what is that thing going to be? Um, but when that thing does happen, uh, I think staying calm and knowing how to adjust versus freaking out, getting frustrated, um, or trying to make up for it too much. Um, for example, last year when the pull-up bar was a little bit wobbly, rather than freak out and, you know, waste all my energy trying to stay on pace with the pull-ups, I thought, okay, I'm just going to give myself 30 more seconds here. Um, so I kind of pivoted my strategy, um, cut the, the sets back a little bit, dropped from like some sets of 10 to sets of seven or eight just added 30 seconds to my plan split. Um, and I was able to end up kind of chipping away at some of that, that lost time on the push-ups afterwards. Um, so just again, staying calm. If something happens, don't freak out. Don't be so married to the, the pace or the strategy that you can't pivot. Just make a small adjustment and, and keep doing the best you can after that. Yeah, no, I think you make some good points there. And I think it's something that I know you, you emphasize with your athletes and something I try to emphasize with my athletes is to, you know, okay, here's, you know, on the continuum of here's the perfect scenario, the likelihood of that happening for any given race or event is so low, you know, and here's everything goes wrong. That's probably not going to happen either. It's probably going to be somewhere in between where eh, probably a few things, maybe, you know, get, you get behind, you know, if you're running, if you're just out on the five, you know, you're doing a Memorial Day 5K race, and you're just trying to PR for yourself, right? There's, there's the odds you get stuck behind someone or you, you, you stumble someplace. Like, something I try and tell people is remember it's, it's in the past, right? Once it happens, it's happened. There's, you can't change it at that, at that point. Let it roll off your back. Kind of like you said, you have to, you know, like, like a martial artist would say, you don't want to be a rigid rod. You want to be able to flex a little bit, right? A flexible rod. Yeah. Right. The only thing yeah, that so, kind of sucks so, about this situation, right. Is a lot of times if you're, uh, you're, you're playing a football game or it's a track meet or it's a Memorial day 5k, if you, you screw up. It's like, well, I'll get it in the next race or whatever. But when it's something that like this happens once a year, um, it's like, well, shoot, I got 52 weeks until I can, you know, redeem myself or whatever. Um, so it, that, that applies, I think a little bit more pressure. Um, but I'm just trying not to let it bother me too much. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. I mean, I think this is obviously the higher up you go in any competition, right. It's sort of your level and you're obviously at the top of Murph. Um, you know, it, it does ratchet things up. Right. But I think, you know, as a good rule of thumb, 
for any athlete, right? Whether you're a beginner or more advanced, sort of remembering to be flexible and relax is a good idea. Yeah. Um, post birth, you else... always have some interest. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was going to add. Um, if anything, though, despite this being kind of the the second record attempt and whatnot, um, and there's I think a little bit more kind of build up and anticipation for me, like I. I have a videographer coming out to like document the whole thing right now. I, I really want to make sure that I fulfill kind of my, my promises and the, um, as it were, but I would still say I feel less pressure than last time. Cause I feel like when I did it last year, I'd been off kind of the competitive circuit for a while. I hadn't raced in a while. Um, and I come out and say, I'm going to beat, you know, Hunter McIntyre's Murph record. And people are like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> um, so there was, there is not, I think as much belief that it was possible for me last year. Um, so I think I had more, more to prove, I guess, with it. Um, now that I've done that, it's like, well, I have the record, even if I fail on Monday, I still have the record. So kind of big whoop, right? Um, so in a sense, I'm, I'm just thinking about it that way, um, to take a little bit of pressure off. No, I think that's, a, that's a, you're in a unique position with that, where you do have that sort of, I don't want to call it, I guess a buffer in some sense, uh, for, for what you we walk out of one way or the other, you're kind of walking out in the same situation, I guess. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. So looking past Murph, you always have some interesting things on your schedule and your plate with what you're doing. Cause you're very good at a multitude of things. Uh, what is probably the next event or two for, or a couple of events for the rest of the year that you're looking to, to do? Cause you are the reigning crucible winner from this past October. Uh, so yeah. are you looking to do that again or, you know, anything else? I'm looking to do Crucible again for sure and a, a number of other things as well. Um, I did win the Crucible last year, but there are certain aspects of my performance that I wasn't pleased with. Um, in particular, the super total. Um, I had kind of poorly timed my, my one rep max attempts with some travel and it just did not go according to plan. Um, so I feel like I had kind of a weak showing on the strength side. And that's something I've been working on the last year anyways. Uh, I've had a huge strength and kind of hypertrophy emphasis over the last year of training. So I'm really hoping to add a significant amount of poundage to the super total. Um, and then ho- hopefully getting some minor improvements and everything else as well. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Really excited to you know show off some strength gains and whatnot. Um, and then alongside the Crucible, um, actually the same month as the Crucible, I'm running the Twin Cities Marathon, uh, which actually surprises me, I surprised myself kind of signing up for that on a whim. It's like, wait a second. I didn't think I liked road marathons anymore, but here I am on the, on the registration page. What am I doing? Someone, <laughs> someone talked me out of this. Um, but it's, it's been a while since I've really, you know, signed up for just a, an outright running race. Um, I think it's easy for me, uh, not that I would ever stop training hard or anything like that, but I think sometimes my conditioning work and conditioning programming can get a bit sloppy, if you will. Um, if I don't have, you know, a, a fixed event on the calendar, I'm training hard, I'm doing things, but there's not that, that there's not the same level of focus. Um, so really I was just looking for what could I use to basically, you know, give myself that, that kick in the pants I needed to take that conditioning up a notch. Like what the heck? It's a great race. It's a lot of fun. It may not be my, my strong suit or favorite um, type of event, uh, but I think it's a, a good thing to have on the calendar. Um, so that and the cruise are kind of guiding the rest of the training year. Um, I'm going to do the Spartan Ultra, um, so 50K obstacle race in Hawaii um, in August as well. So those are the the only three things that I'm signed up for um, as far as events. And then just an ever-present kind of goal that's been in my mind for the last year um, is trying to accomplish the uh, 500-pound squat five-minute mile challenge. Uh, I think that'd be be super cool. Um, Squat needs a a little bit more work on it, um, but just as an overarching kind of hybrid athlete accomplishment. Um, that's kind of the big thing I'm chasing right now. You got to chase those arbitrary, you know, numbers, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so I always have people ask me, you know, when people, so I've had clients, I say like, what's a good, you know, what's a good like hybrid comparison? I'm like, I, where are you at now? Let's go from there. You know, right. Let's not pick some <laughs> arbitrary thing that might not be you know, possible for you. Um, that's awesome. That sounds like a great training. You know, you got a lot lined up. Um, you know, do you, do you see, I mean, I, I, I have a rough idea of how you train, but I think our audience might not. So do you, you know, with those things in mind, and obviously, you know, you sort of mentioned an emphasis on 
cleaning up your endurance work. Um, you know, outside of that, do you see a real big change in your training coming off of Murph or is it sort of more strength, hypertrophy, get stronger, bring up that super total and just, you know, improve that endurance work? Yeah. Um, you know, compared to what I was doing before kind of the Murph prep cycle started, I don't see a ton changing other than running a little bit more, especially, you know, my running is a little bit more seasonal here in the, the Twin Cities. It's it's super cold in the winter. It's not as fun to run a, run a whole lot. So um, running at one running will ramp up for me here in the summer. Um, I'm excited to have, you know, Murph kind of out of the way um, just because a lot of the, the higher volume muscular endurance work, it's, it's very fatiguing. Um, it kind of takes its, its toll on you and it prevents me from doing some of the other training that I, I really want to do um, doing, you know, I love hypertrophy sessions. I think they're, they're super fun, just like hypertrophy and, and general conditioning um, to me is the, the most fun type of training. Um, so getting back into just some, some classic pump sessions, um, get some buys and tries in, you know, who doesn't love of that? Course. So of course. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to, you know, put that back in the program and not be worried about, well, I don't want to get my arms too fatigued for, for this or whatever. So um, definitely looking forward to that. Um, but more or less back to, to kind of the same, that like mix of strength slash hypertrophy slash running the, the kind of little bit of everything program that I struggle to balance. <laughs> Don't we all? Don't we all? It's all, yeah. it's always what we're trying to do for our, ourselves and our clients. Um, right. We tend to do it pretty well. There you go. Um, Alec, I don't think I have any other major questions for you today. Uh, if someone wanted to follow you, I know you're always posting cool workout videos and tips and tricks on your Instagram. Uh, what is your Instagram handle for our audience? So it's just my, my first and last name, no spaces, Alec Blenis. Uh, you can find me on Instagram there. I've been doing a weekly Q&A, uh, which I've really enjoyed. It's gotten a lot of great great feedback and engagement on that. So if you have uh, training questions or other questions or, or anything you think I could help you with, I usually put that sticker up on Thursday or Friday to kind of kick off the weekend and, and answer some questions there. Um, so give me a follow, ask some questions and, uh, it'll be fun. Yeah. You can also email him at alec at hybrid dash hyphen academy.com. Uh, he'll be happy to answer you there. Um, if you want to work with Alec, uh, or myself, just hit us up at the email or Instagram and work with you through CHP. Uh, Alec, anything else you want to add? Oh gosh. I, I didn't think of closing remarks. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I, so if you're following, uh, following along and you're interested kind of in the future of, of how Murph went, um, I will have updates posted on Instagram and all that kind of stuff. So if you're like listening, you know, three weeks from now or a year from now and you're like, Oh, I wonder how it went. Uh, just check out my Instagram. I'll, I'll have some stuff on there for you. Um, really looking forward to it. Perfect. Um, all right, folks. Well, thanks, thanks so much for having me on Anthony. It was a lot of fun. Thank you, Alec. We appreciate it. Cheers.